Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate all my subscribers, new, those of you that's been here for a while. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate those of you who visit. Guys, feel free to check out my videos tab. And then you can also hit my playlist tab. You will find videos that I have in there that are categorized. You have the ability to binge watch. You have the ability to search for some specific videos um, based on things that you're looking for. I'm still categorizing it, but there's still more than enough for you to get a pretty good idea what the channel is about, as well as maybe something that would be encouraging to you or maybe give you some answers or at least set you on a path for more answers through the Lord. And, um, you know, you can binge watch, just go in there and hit play. <laughs> Feel free to share my videos. Feel free to caveat, meaning, hey, this sparked something in you that maybe God had already been speaking to you about. Now, I'm not a person that believed that, oh, you're stealing my videos and stealing my ideas. No, <laughs> because none of our ideas comes from ourselves anyway. And, you know, if anyone wants to take a video to do something wrong with it, then that's between them and God, not me. I've been obedient and done God's will. So, guys, we're all on one accord. And most of the times we're getting a lot of the same messages. So, please, I do not feel any type of way if, hey, you happen to do a video that sounds a lot like what I have done. Because God speaks to us. And it's not necessarily that anybody's trying to follow anybody. Okay, but hey, the Lord spoke it to you, so speak it, okay? And you're also free to share my videos. So guys, I have quite a bit of information that I want to share with you all, but I want to talk to you all about the importance of staying with the Lord as Christians, as believers. It's very, very important that we are doing this and we're not going back and forth. You know, I get emails i get different things and people are oh it seems like i just can't stop doing this i can't get out of this i don't know what's going on but i'm here to tell you when the lord sets you free and you allow yourself to go into sin a lot of times people think that oh when they sin you know god forgive me okay god forgives you very easily but sometimes you expect oh everything else to go back to normal immediately and guys sometimes what it is depending on what those principalities and powers and strongholds are that you keep dibbling and dabbling in, then guys, sometimes it's going to take longer for you to get back to where you need to be. Because every time you allow a spirit access into your life and you do certain things, it gets harder. It gets harder to get out. And especially when you stay there and hang out for a while, guys, Many people, what they do is they sin, they get into it, they keep repeating it over and over again, and then they're going, oh, why is it taking so long? Why is this going on? Guys, because it's spiritual. Every time you sin, it's not just you just did this thing. There's spiritual connections, ramifications, all types of stuff, and now you have to go through this process of getting yourself cleansed again. The Lord does forgive you right away, but the cleansing process can be extensive depending on what it is. So now, so now in the meantime, time when the Lord is cleansing you and bringing you out and showing you things in the, you decide you're going to take a break again and go back into sin. So I'm going to read a few things to you guys that has been laid on my heart to share. I just need you to listen and you know what? I lost the page, but it's okay. I can find the scripture really quickly. I'm going to read something to you and it's going to help you. So I'm going to start in Daniel chapter 10 and I'm going to read you 2 through 14. I'm reading the KJV, but I'm going to read everything to you and then I'll end it by giving you everything what the Lord gave me. So Jan Daniel chapter 10, beginning at 2. It says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three week, till three full weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hiddekel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body, his body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of a lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color 
to polish brass and his voice and the voice and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude wow <laughs> so i'm gonna read six again his body was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude and i daniel alone saw the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves therefore i was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption and i retained no strength yet heard i the voice of his words and when i heard the voice of his words then was i in a deep sleep on my face and my and my face toward the ground and behold an hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands then said he unto me o daniel a man greatly beloved understand the words that i speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken these words unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day, listen to this, guys. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days, so 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. So guys, they were not talking, this angel was not talking about, um, human princes because humans are no matches for angel but there are principalities and powers in different parts you know in the supernatural and what we see manifested in the natural guys through people but it's all supernatural read ephesians 6 okay starting at 10 but guys so here's the thing daniel was praying for 20 for he had been praying for fasting for three four weeks the, from the first day that his request was made to, to get understanding and wisdom from the very first day this angel this angel was sent and was coming but he ended up in what a supernatural spiritual warfare and fight with the prince of the kingdom of Persia, and he had to get get help from michael okay and they remained there and battled it out and now he made it back and i believe if I'm not, if I am not mistaken further down in the scripture, it tells you, it might be in the next one where the next scripture, where it talks about how he was, he was going to have to fight on his way back. So guys notice that make a note of that from the time he prayed, it took 21 days, 21 days, guys, he was battling and fighting. That's what tarried, caused the angel to take a while to come. Now, guys, I'm going to go over to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, 43 and 45 says this. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through, through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. This is Jesus speaking. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven more spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So the unclean spirit leaves, comes back, brings more spirit, more worse. Now my final scripture to you guys is going to be uh, Matthew chapter 17. And I'm going to read you 15 to 21. This man who has a 
demon possessed son. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer with you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of the child departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour then came the disciples to jesus apart and said why could not why could not we cast them out why could not we cast them out and jesus said unto him because of your unbelief okay that was one for verily i say unto you if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed and shall say unto this mountain remove henceforth to yonder place and it shall it you shall say to this mountain remove from this place and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible to you however however this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting so even though they had the faith to remove mountains and things of that nature there's a certain kind of spirit that is not just about having faith but by prayer and fasting that this kind will come out so guys, I read you Daniel chapter 10, 2 through 14. That showed you how long it took the angel to get there from the time Daniel started praying. Matthew chapter 12, 43 to 45. That tells you about that unclean spirit that goes, that gets cast out and goes traveling and looking for a place to rest and decide to come back to the person, the source from which it was cast out. Finds it empty and brings now more wicked spirit and they become worse. And I also read you Matthew 17, 15 through 21. That tells you how there are certain types of spirits, certain type of struggles that you're going to have. That's going to, it's going to take more than faith. You're going to have to pray and fast. What does this have to do with the scripture there of with the title? Because many of you just jump into sin so quickly. Guys, I've been there right in the past, but nope, not no more because it's too costly. It's too costly and takes too much time. But there are people who are habitually sinning. People who say that they're Christians, okay? Sinners going to sin and they're doing what they're doing. But you know what? Christians are too busy sinning too. So there's nobody, there are very few people witnessing to the sinner because the Christians are too busy sinning, trying to get a taste of what the sinners got, but then wanted to, you know, renege and I know I'm a Christian. So guys, the whole purpose of this video is to tell you this. Don't be so quick to sin because even when you ask the Lord to forgive you, it takes time. Even when Daniel, even Daniel, a just man, was praying for wisdom and he wanted to, to get more of the Lord and he was praying for his people and fasting for his people, it took 21 days for that devil, I mean, for, for the angel of God to get there because he was fighting demons and devils. He's fighting a demon. He's fighting a principality. It took a long time for the angel of God to get there. It took 21 days, guys. And this was for a just man. He prayed, but there was still a battle that needed to happen before it came into fruition. So guys, what happens is when people are just in this habit of sinning, Christians, okay? You're in the habit of sinning and falling into things. How long will it take from the time you ask the Lord to forgive you? Okay, you're forgiven on the spot, but for you to be now set free, it took Daniel 21 days. And some of you, you ask for forgiveness on this day, but then day one or day two, and then now you now you ask for forgiveness, and now you're back in sin again in day five. So how much more more how much more time is gonna be added on to? Let's say it's gonna take 21 days for you to get this breakthrough and to be set free from the spirit. Because every time you put yourself in harm's way spiritually through sin, there's a principality and a power that gets a lawful entrance in your life, guys. So then what begins to happen? You ask the Lord, oh, Lord, forgive me. And now you're praying and everything. Now there's an angel of the Lord fighting for you, coming through this. It took Daniel 21 days. Maybe it will take you 30 days. Maybe not. But guess what, guys? Why you're, while the angels of the Lord is fighting for you, you pick up the phone again to get back into something else. You stop praying because you didn't see immediately immediate result. You stop fasting. You stop doing what you need to do because, oh, I don't like how this is happening or that is happening. 
So how much more time do you tack on or how much more do you prolong it? Because if you turn back, the angels cannot fight against the spirit that you are inviting in. So if you, let's say it's okay, I want to stop being angry and you ask the Lord to forgive you and the Lord is, is, He's going to instruct you on your end on things that you need to do. In the meantime, in the supernatural, the angels of God are fighting and overcoming these spirits, right? But guys, here you are on your end. You're falling back into it again. The Lord is telling you the things that you need to do to avoid your angry outburst. You keep going back around the same people, doing the same things, and, and you, you're not reading your word. You're not studying. You don't want to fast. And all this stuff. So now while the angels of the Lord are battling for you, you're over here compromising. Once you begin to compromise, once you begin to go back, you give them the legal rights. Those angels can't keep fighting against those principalities and powers that you keep inviting, you know, every, every other week, twice a week. You see? Daniel was consistent in his fast. Daniel was in, was consistent. You may not be fasting necessarily, but you know, if, unless God calls you to it, but being consistent in walking in the things of God and obeying God, that's what he was doing. He was consistent in his obedience and loyalty and faithfulness to God. So even though it took 21 days, that angel was able to overcome and Michael got involved in the fight because Daniel was consistent on his end. But even with him being a just and faithful man, it took him 21 days, guys. So when you are in sin and you're making yourself messy all over again, sometimes you're confused as to why it seems like things are not changing. Well, sometimes things are not changing, guys, because you are still inviting the spirit. You ask the Lord to forgive you, but you want relief from the pressure. You want relief from the guilt. And then you'll stop for a little while and then you go right back into it. So the angels of God are fighting for you. The angels of God are sending these demons packing. The Lord is telling you to do some stuff. Things are moving in the heavens, but then there you go again, going right back to it and when you do it the spirit has a right the angels got to take their hands off of them because you invited them back in guys the other thing i want to tell you in matthew 12 43 and 45 when that unclean spirit or whatever that sin is get cast out of you Okay, you look good on the outside, but you're not filled with the spirit of God. You're not filled with his word. You're not spending time with God. So you look garnished. You look good on the outside, but on the inside, you're still empty. Well, guys, when you do that, that spirit has a right to come back in. If you keep going back to it and they enter in, it's going to be harder for you. You're going to find yourself doing more. It's going to take you longer to come back to the Lord. Why? Because the spirit never comes back alone. It's going to come back with seven more worse than itself. So your state is worse. And then you're getting mad. God, I can't believe it's taking you so long to deliver me and blah, 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 blah. Because you think, bippity boppity boop. Jesus is supposed to get the magic one. Click your heels three times and then I'm out of my sin. Well, no, guys, you have to have a mindset that no, no, I'm not going to keep falling into sin. It's too costly. That's how you got to see it. It's too costly. It's not that you will never make mistakes, guys, but it shouldn't be that you're just habitually living in sin and just doing what you want to do. And then you're confused and you think that God has not heard you. But nine times out of 10, guys, like I told you, either you're not waiting on the Lord and being patient with him or you're disobeying God. And when you're disobeying the Lord, there's access to the devil. What it is people want to disobey the Lord and Lord, please keep me. God is not top flight security. God is not your bodyguard, your personal bodyguard. Okay. I remember a long time ago watching a uh, comedy. I used to love to watch Martin and um, his stand up comedies. I think the one I saw was you so crazy. And he was talking in that one. He's making a joke about how, you know, you can call that, uh, courtesy driver if you drink him i forgot what it's called and instead of driving home you can call them and they can take you home and so martin was talking about how he will call them and say hello <laughs> i need to get to 555 cane road right well guess what now the 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 the, the courtesy driver comes to pick him up 
but drop all the all he wanted to do was to get dropped off at another party right so he said thank you i'll call you when i really need to ride home right so a lot of times what people do is they want that courtesy forgiveness they want god to you know hey god get me out of this situation but they don't really want to be out of the situation so guys what happens when you live like that matthew 12 43 through 45 kicks in in your life where it gets worse it gets worse if you with somebody you're not supposed to be with, all oh, the relationship gets worse. Why? Because in you and in that person, you're not supposed to be with them. You're not listening to God. You're disobeying God. So guys, disobedience fans the flame for sins to just get really just exacerbate in your life. And then I find a lot of people that's like, oh, I don't understand. It's taking so long. Could it be possible that you are doing some things in the meantime or you're overlooking some things that God is telling you to do? You can't just sin and then you sin and then, oh, it's there's a supernatural thing that is going on. So the Lord has forgiven you, but there is a process in this. There are certain things God will do right away and it's gone. And then there are other things, guys, it's a battle. Ephesians 6 says it. So if you are not walking in Ephesians 6 and 10 on, guys, you can't be asking God to help you. You don't want to put on the helmet of salvation. You don't want to put on the belt of truth. You lying, you're doing all types of different things. You don't want to have the, the shield of faith. You don't want to do your part. You don't want to pray. You don't want to turn the plate over. You don't want to listen to the instructions of the Lord. And now you're confused as to why it's taking so long. And Matthew 17, 15 through 21, this kind of comes out only by prayer and fasting. So you were set free probably by your own fasting or someone praying for you. The grace of God, he set you free from something. This kind that is discussed in Matthew 17, 15 through 21. Well, now you've been set free and now you go back in sin. So you're this kind point this kind of uh, the version 5.0 and their buddies comes back in your life and now you're wondering why you're further tormented guys things take time there's a process when we are delivered and it really what is what do we have to do we only need to listen to god and obey and do our part the supernatural takes care of itself the angels of god will fight for you the lord will fight your battles for you but guys if you keep going into the, the enemy's camp if you keep bringing the enemy into your camp if you keep laying in the bed of the enemy if the angels of the lord are fighting for you just like they were doing in daniel chapter 10 okay and you decide you want to stop praying you decide you want to Go make that phone call again. You decide you want to lie again. You decide you want to disobey God again. Then the angels of the Lord have to step back while these spirits enter your life and torment you. So a lot of times why some of you are not getting free from things is because you keep entertaining the enemy. You you don't let God get us get through a phase of getting you right because what you do is you, you may do good a week or two and then you're going back to the same thing again. So who's winning the battle here? Had Daniel stopped praying, had Daniel got tired in week two, that angel of the Lord would not have overcome the prince of Persia. Michael would have never been called in. Not because they don't have the ability to do this, but what they don't have the ability to do is to override your will and your decisions. Understand that when you sin, you put yourself some steps back. Now, I'm not talking about like guys, like I said, sometimes as believers, those of you, you, those of you, us, we are truly seeking God. I'm trying to tell you, the more you're seeking God, the less you're going to find yourself sinning. You ain't going to be doing no major stuff, but even the minor things, guys, you'll be like, uh-uh, okay, God, um, nope, because you're not trying to go back. But there are people, there are believers that are, that are living, living foul and doing all types of stuff and falling into sin over and over again. And then they're frustrated when they're not getting like a quick fix, a quick pick me up. And I already asked for forgiveness. And why come this is happening? Because it takes a while and it takes a process. And you must be willing to stand fast and to hold on to the Lord and let him take you through that process and stay before him, guys, and stop letting go and going back and making it longer prolonging your delivery prolonging prolonging your prolonging your victory prolonging your breakthrough prolonging it guys because you keep playing with it and going back to it god forgives you immediately 
Yes. But the spiritual warfare has begun and continues and begins to set you free. Your position in the natural is very, very important. I hope this makes sense, guys. Don't play with sin. Avoid it. <laughs> Go the other way. Because every time you do it, you become further and further entangled. Further and further entangled. The word of God says in Galatians 5 and 1, it says, Stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. It's entangling. It's yoky. It's messy. You don't want to go there. You don't have to go back to level. You were on level four and now you got to go back to level one and it's going to take you a while to get back to where you are in Christ. Okay, we're all learning. We're all desiring to move forward in the things of God. Be obedient and refrain from sin.